It's Anna Marie from ERA King in Alabama. Happy New Year. Hopefully you've had an opportunity to put together your New Year's resolutions for 2014. I know I have. If uh, to purchase a house is one of those resolutions for this year, I want to help you be successful. Uh, excuse me, I want to make sure that you're successful uh, in making that wish, that dream come true. So as with anything, um, a dream without a plan is just a wish. So I sat down with uh, Michael Glanzer from Cornerstone Mortgage. He helped me put together just three quick steps that you could do to get you on your way to making sure that you're able to purchase a house by the end of the year. First one would be to check your credit. There's lots of free options out there. Um, credit, freecreditreport.com, creditkarma.com. You can also go to the three uh, reporting agencies and have them send you a copy of your credit report and so that you can get your credit score. You can always just call Glanzer and he can give you a copy of it too. And at least if you call him, he can print it out for you and go over any things that you need to work on. The main thing you want to do that first is you don't know where to go. Uh, if your credit score is not with most programs at least a minimum of 620 you're not going to be able to purchase a house so by doing this first it gives you op the opportunity to see if there's anything that you need to work on to get your credit score higher so that you can be able to purchase a house obviously the better credit score you have um, the better interest rates you can get and there's some other things that will pay off in the end when purchasing a house too uh, second step is to start saving money um, you're gonna have a down payment there's going to be um, loan closing costs and prepaid items uh, that, that are your responsibility as a buyer. There's inspections. There's earnest money. There's just, you're going to have to have some skin in the game. Now, if you're lucky enough to uh, be able to qualify for a 100% financing option and the seller agrees to pay all of your closing costs, you just got yourself a nice little account to purchase all that new furniture you've already been looking at. All right, and step number three is figure out what your comfort level is in a payment. Um, how much are you, can you afford to pay? Not how much can you afford, but how much are you comfortable paying a month to buy a house? You know, if you're already paying rent, you kind of have a good baseline of what you're comfortable with. Is it too little? Um, you know, could you, would you be comfortable paying more? Or are you tapped out? You know, you don't have uh, any extra funds to provide any quality of life. And so you want to go down a little bit. It'll give you a good idea of how much you're comfortable paying every month. Then the other very important part is to figure out how that falls in line with your debt ratio. I suggest that you take that monthly payment amount and add up any other revolving and or installment loans that you have. That would be like a um, credit card, gas card, student loans, line of credit, anything like that. Add that up with that monthly payment and then divide that into your gross monthly income. If that number is over 40%, then um, the lender is going to think that that's, that's not a good ratio. Now, you know, 40 is a good number to use. There's some programs that go above or below there, but that's, that's a good safe number for you to use when you're looking into uh, whether the lender will think that that ratio is good. Now, if it's higher than 40%, might want to pay down some of that debt uh, to get that number to get that number where it needs to be as far as the percentage that the lenders feel comfortable. Uh, I put all this down below for you to read through. If you have any questions or comments, don't hesitate to give me a call. Uh, I can be reached at anna-marie at era-king.com or you can always text me. I'm always available. Again, Happy New Year and I want to help.